Let's talk about Man United. Yeah. What is going on at Man United? <laughs> Again, look, you know what I think of when you played Man United? Mm. You're going to Old Trafford and you're you're praying for a point. Yeah. Like, just I'm give us a point. Yeah. No <laughs> point. I'm praying for a touch. Not a point. I'm for a touch. What's happening now? When you look at it now, do you find it all just crazy? Like that's the only word I can use. Like just what, how is this happening? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I mean, you you look at what is going on. They've had three managers now that can't seem to get it right. Well, no, more than that because they've not won the Premier League since 2013. Yeah. I don't think so. It's been longer than that. But at the minute, there just seems to be no real urgency, no de yeah. uh, determination, no energy, uh, no balance to the team, no clear plan of what's going to go on. Tactic. It's, it's, like, it's almost like they, we saw the game against Brentford, for instance, where Dude. they kept the, the first 15 minutes, they've tried to do the same thing, play out from the back. When you know De Gea... His biggest strength is, is shot stopping. He's not comfortable with the ball at his yeah. feet, but yet they, they overly continue to try and do it. They get caught, the first, they get away with it the first couple of times, but you're a little bit like, oof, the third one they get punished, mm. and it goes from bad to worse. I don't think they've got the players at the minute that really know what it means to wear that shirt. I think there are players in that squad that are hiding from wearing the shirt. There are players in the squad that are choosing the easy way out, which is, well, don't pick me, don't pick me. So they've got a completely massive reboot. I feel sorry for Ten Hag to a point, I think he's got to the football club. So he knew what he was going to. But I don't I mean? think he, he really... You look at the, the players on paper and you go, well, I can get a tune out of these players. You talk about yeah. Ronaldo, yeah. Bruno Fernandes, yeah. Varane. These guys are established yeah, internationals. Ridiculous. When you think about it, it's ridiculous. Rashford, Sancho, these guys, Ericsson now. These guys are all internationals. Yeah. And the fact they're playing as bad as they are tells you that the problem's a lot deeper than what's going on at face value. But Eric Ten Hag, again, I feel sorry, sorry for him for a point. But then when he's playing the same players and he can quite evidently see it's not working, mm. he continues with the same process, then what does he expect is going to happen? Ronaldo's come in there and he just he makes other players second guess. But, and listen, he commands respect. Mm. You talk about arguably, well, he's the greatest goal scorer we've ever seen. Yeah. So he commands that respect. But when you've got young players that are kind of trying to develop and get better and better, and you've got someone up the top of the field that's got that kind of presence, that's still determined to get the numbers that he wants to get to, you just take a little bit away from what makes these other players special yeah. and I think it just hasn't worked as a whole you'd have, to, you'd have to hold your hands up before Ronaldo got there they finished second if it was their last season got his own numbers got which was brilliant 24 last season which is brilliant but they finished sixth mm. so how, how, how where's the comparison how would you say that you're better with him in the team if you finish second to sixth is the problem ultimately the players is it the managers that have come we've had some good managers United right you think of Van Gaal, experienced Mourinho. I know Moise didn't work, but they've tried everything, right? They've gone from sort of progressive managers to experienced managers, now again mm. to progressive manager. Is it the owners? Everyone says the owners are taking money at the club and not putting money back in. It's just everything. It's, I, I get the owners and I get the, I understand the fans hate the owners, but they have put their hand in their pocket and given them an awful lot of money. Like mm. you talk about nearly a billion pounds spent. Yeah. Now, I get it. They, they don't like the owners. They take the dividends out of the club. I get all of that. But one thing they have done is back, when you Liverpool, yeah. you, want, you want the owners yeah. to back the manager, give yeah. them money to spend, to bring players in. They've done that and it's not worked. So you've got to talk about recruitment. That hasn't been good enough. As you said there, they've had Moyes, Van Gaal, Mourinho, Oli, Ranić. Mourinho and Van Gaal have got pedigree. Yeah. These guys have won big trophies. Yeah, you're not going to tell me those are bad managers. Exactly. Well, Mourinho still won two trophies. Yeah, yeah. But he always says his biggest accomplishment was finishing second with that Manchester yeah. United squad. But it, it all comes down to recruitment. Liverpool get their recruitment. A star, get it spot on. Manchester City, get it spot on. Even you say Arsenal now to a point, they're getting their spot on. Mm. Manchester United right now are so far from the Manchester United that we know 10 years ago. Well, it's crazy. Like 10 years ago, everyone would have gone United. Yeah. Like, they would have taken your best player. Of course they would have. There's nothing you can it, do about nothing it. Nothing you could do. Here's the check. See you yeah. at Carrington. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's nothing you can exactly. do about it. Now they can't get anyone. No. It's mental. Well, they are, I think now they're, they're shopping in completely different markets. They cannot, and, and I know Manchester United fans don't want to hear that. They can't compete right now with Manchester City. Wow. They can't compete with Liverpool, right? They're, they're the two that you'd mm. have to... Arsenal, Tottenham, you'd put ahead of them at this current moment in time. Well, wait, so you're saying if you're a player out there, just so I don't want to put words mm. in your mouth, and Arsenal, Tottenham and Man United come across your desk, yeah. you're looking at Arsenal and Tottenham before United? You, you have to. Wow. Because why would you not? Also, I didn't even mention Chelsea. Chelsea are ahead of them as well. Mm. But you've, you've got to look at it and be br brutally honest. Why would you go to Manchester United in this current climate? It's a toxic environment right now. The fans are not happy. The, the training ground's still okay to a point. Your, your teammates look like they're, they're shirking. The stadium's crumbling. Crumbling. I've been there recently. It's not, not what it once was. Your teammates are shirking responsibility. Why would you want to go into I know it's Manchester United Football Club and they're one of the biggest in the world. 
But why would you go into that pressure cooker right now? Mm. What, what is their clear sense of direction? What, what, what are they trying to build at Manchester United? You'd have no idea. You go to Liverpool, you know what they're trying to do. You know what City are trying to do. Chelsea, okay, maybe at this present time are, are struggling a bit. But, you know, forward, they get a couple more signings in. They're going to be pushing for the big. league as well. Yeah. So, right now, Manchester United are in a mess. And how they, they sort that out is beyond me. But they're going to have to start from the bottom again and start to work their way back up. Do they make top six this season? At this current climate, no. Whoa.